But just, I'm happy to hear from you. Just make sure to address your remarks to me, okay? Mm -hmm. Great. Um, my name is Catrice Capolino. I am Lee's mom. And so are his family members. Ivelisse Cornell, Gustavo Paulino, Julique and Samuel Paulino, Christine Winchard, and Carlos Villoria. Grandmother, grandfather, uncles, aunts, and father of Lima Novi, Loria Paulino. On November 18th, 2016, our world was irreversibly changed when Lima Novi was taken from us. He was just 16 years old when he was murdered. And every day we struggled with the fact that his life was cut too short when he was in the cusp of so much. But that wasn't enough for the criminal that took his life. As found by the jury through the evidence presented in this trial, Aliminal's murder was not only premeditated, but carried out with extreme atrocity and cruelty. In the weeks before his remains were found, in the years leading up to his conviction, we drove ourselves crazy trying to make sense of what had been done. We have wondered hopelessly, hopelessly, what could have we have done differently, and tried to understand why someone would plan to commit such a horrible crime to such an amazing person. From the moment that the news became public, all we have heard is outpouring of sentiments echoing the facts that we knew to be true. Alimano Villoria Paulino was a sincere, loving, responsible, charismatic, and altruistic young man on the verge of seizing life that many, many goals truncated. With the assassination of Limano, we were also assassinated because Lee was everything for this family. It was my firstborn, Gustavo Nivalis's first grandchild, and Samuel and Julique's first nephew. Lee Manoa has always been immensely important to us, but now with him gone, we feel like we can't breathe. Lee Manoa was and will continue to be our oxygen. He has been the soul of this family since we were born, since he was born. And in spite of us standing here today, we're living, when living dead after he was brutally ripped from our side. There are no more dreams for the dreamer, the brother, the writer, and the poet that was Lima Novilo y Paulino, because the mind of this criminal landed on him as a target and decided to take his life. There are no more trips to us, with us with Lee, and there's no more happy home projects if we cannot con include him. Our lovely one, Limonol, was the driving force behind us, behind so many of the activities we used to do and loved bringing the family together. Sharing a meal as a family was one of his favorite things. And because of this, he, he always looked forward to Thanksgiving celebration. 
We will never again have a Thanksgiving dinner because Limono was torn from our arms just a few days before Thanksgiving of 2016. Limono Villore Perlino was a great servant at our church where he volunteered full of love and dedication. Everybody there misses him dearly. He put his soul in the last activity they had about a month before his tragedy, where he painted more than 120 glasses with a beautiful, positive message to be the youth. Despite whatever sentence is decided upon, we understand that nothing will bring Ligonel back to us. However, we feel that this criminal deserves to spend his life in carcerity. So at very least, it serves to keep him off the streets. He should never have the opportunity to kill again, to rob another person of their life like he did to Limono in such a horrible and sad way. We hope that the sentence handed down serves to help him find remorse and repentance in his life. We reaffirm that the assassin, assassin of Limono, Bedora Paulino, should receive the maximum sentence. Nothing I can say um, could um, illustrate better than what um, Lee's mom just said um, as to the loss of Lee to uh, their family and the Lawrence community as a whole. Um, Katiuska said, um, and I agree, that whatever sentence is decided upon, uh, no term of years will bring Lee back. Um, but it can uh, both uh, send a message to the defendant and the community um, um, loud and clear. As the court knows, um, the defendant was convicted of, of two separate theories, um, extreme atrocity and cruelty, which carries with it a, a life sentence with a parole eligibility date of 30 years. That's not uh, discretionary. So I guess what we're talking about here is what sentence um, he should receive on the deliberate premeditation portion of, um, um, of the verdict. And, uh, the Do you think I need to sentence him on both? Yes. Okay. Um, and the court has discretion to sentence him uh, to a term of life. It's a life sentence to a term of life with parole eligibility um, between 25 and with a maximum of 30 years. And the Commonwealth believes that uh, the 30-year um, um, sentence is the appropriate one. But it's one conviction, so just may help me understand the consequence of the two is if for whatever reasons on appeal the extreme atrocity or cruelty is reversed and the other kicks in, is that the only? Yes. Okay. Because they will be running concurrent. Okay. Um, but I think it's also symbolic of, of the case that we have um, and that was tried and was heard and that the defendant was convicted of in front of this jury because the, what the defendant did to, to Lee um, uh, deserves the maximum penalty. And if we think about what this premeditation was, putting aside the extreme, uh, uh, the extreme atrocity and cruelty, and think about what he did, this was something that he was looking forward to, anticipating, and we know that through the defendant's own words when, we're, when, we, when we hear about the text, when he said something to the effect of, when I think of killing someone, I smirk. I can't get it out of my head. It, it gives me joy, things of that nature. That's who we're dealing with, and that's what this trial was about. And so I can't think of anything that is more premeditated when someone is thinking about it, plans it, carries out a rather sophisticated plan, if you will, to get uh, Lee out of the house, brings him down, and then stabs him to death. And what we heard about the killing itself, putting aside the extreme atrocity and kill, uh, cruelty, is Lee was stabbed dozens of times while he was still alive. And the medical examiner explained all that during his trial, Your Honor. There will, to the family, there will never be justice for what was done to Lee. And 
um, the legislature had made has made the decision that this is the punishment that um, a person of the defendant's age at the time is subject to. I would suggest that the maximum penalty is the justice that the defendant should receive and that this court should hand down. Thank you. Thank you, Judge. Uh, first of all, I agree with Mr. Gubatosi's legal analysis of the 30 years for the extreme atrocity at 25 to 30 uh, with the deliberate premeditation. Uh, I, I do disagree with his uh, recommendation uh, for 30 on the deliberate premeditation. I, I would request 25, and he, here is why. I, I agree that uh, the nature of this crime uh, would call out for the most <laughs> severe penalty possible, and Your Honor is going to impose that life. I mean, he's getting life. It is uh, a little unusual in our system for a judge to set parole eligibility, and it seems to me that this uh, I've been banging my head against the wall for uh, since the verdict, uh, trying to figure out the statute that sets parole eligibility. It is a confusing statute. And it seems to me that the legislature is uh, asking judges, Your Honor, uh, to do a really impossible thing, is to uh, anticipate what Mr. Borges is going to be like in 25 or 30 years. Um, I would request that Your Honor impose parole eligibility at 25 for that offense, for that portion of the offense, the deliberate premeditation. It's very unlikely that that would ever take effect where a, the, a, an appellate court is going to uh, um, throw out the conviction for extreme atrocity or cruelty and keep the conviction for deliberate premeditation. That's hard to imagine that that, occur, that that would occur. So for all intents and purposes, it's going to be 30-year parole el eligibility. But if the unlikely happens, and all he is being, uh, the, the sentence he is serving is with the deliberate premeditation, uh, I would suggest that you want to leave it to the parole board to figure out whether he is a worthy candidate for parole in 25 years. See how he's done in prison. Your Honor can't uh, know how, what is going to happen over the next 25 years with him. And all I'm asking is that Your Honor give that unlikely possibility uh, that he would be eligible for parole uh, in 25 years. Um, let the parole board decide if he has not had a good record in prison, <laughs> they, won't, they won't parole him. And, and the final thing I, I want to say is he has been convicted of a horrific offense, the worst probably that any of we lawyers have ever seen. But he's not irredeemably depraved. There is hope for his redemption. He can change his life. And that's all I wanted to leave you on with. Okay. Thank you. Um, Mr. Borges, as a defendant before me for sentencing, I give you the opportunity to say something to me if you wish. You do not have to, but I give you that opportunity if you wish to address the court. <clears throat> okay, thank you. you can have a seat. All right. Um, as Council has indicated um, the legislature uh, has, well, the Supreme Court of the United States uh, indicated back in 2012 that a juvenile individual who was tried as an adult but who committed the offense as a juvenile could not be sentenced to um, a life sentence without parole, which is what the sentence would be in this case if the defendant uh, had committed this offense as an adult. So the legislature of Massachusetts um, Ha statutory scheme for someone like Mr. Borges who committed this offense um, as a juvenile uh, mandates that where uh, the defendant was convicted of uh, murder in the first degree with extreme atrocity and cruelty that the court set a minimum term of 30 years and a, and a maximum term of life that the parole eligibility being the 30 years 
um, and that uh, in the context of a conviction of murder in the first degree with extreme atrocity, I mean, sorry, with um, deliberate premeditation, that the court set a minimum uh, term of imprisonment of 25 years, uh, the minimum should be 25 years to 30 years, and the maximum should be life. So with regard to the, uh, the theory of extreme atrocity and cruelty, the court will impose a sentence of uh, 30 years to life as required by uh, the statute. Uh, with regard to uh, the murder in the first degree with deliberate premeditation, the court has, I've taken into consideration the pre-sentence report that was prepared for the court. I've read it carefully um, with all the documentation there. Um, I have considered uh, the fact that Mr. Borges was 15 years old at the time that he committed this offense and um, the fact that individuals who are of that age, uh, they reflects a degree of immaturity and impetuosity and failure to appreciate the risks and consequences. I have factored in uh, information I have gotten from the pre-sentence reports regarding Mr. Borges' family life. Um, and I've, I've considered uh, the details of the offense conduct here, which I heard as having presided over the case. As all of you have indicated, uh, this was a very uh, serious, serious uh, offense. Um, the, uh, the, both from the planning state, there was deliberate planning uh, of the incident that was reflected, um, the text messaging um, that uh, Mr. Borges uh, did reflecting his interest in uh, killing someone, the brutality of the actual murder, um, uh, and all of that um, I have taken into consideration. I also have to take into consideration the possibility of rehabilitation. As Mr. Hayden says, no one is uh, uh, beyond hope. I always look for hope in people. Um, and I have to consider whether there's a possibility of uh, rehabilitation and redemption uh, for the defendant. But considering all of those factors, I've also uh, carefully listened to the, um, the statement of the family. There is no sentence that I can impose that will bring back Lee Polino uh, or that will um, answer the questions that we all have about how this could happen um, and how a 15-year-old boy could kill a friend in this manner. Uh, and so I don't claim to be able to provide you solace in that respect or uh, to answer those questions. But with all these goals in mind and the goals of sentencing generally, uh, I will impose a term of 30 years to life also on the uh, theory of murder, which is deliberate premeditation. Both of those will run concurrent. Uh, I think that's an appropriate sentence. Um, Mr. Borges, has, you have shown that you uh, have pursued at your education in the last few years. That's admirable. Uh, you've shown that you uh, want to be a good person as you can under the circumstances, and I hope you continue that. Uh, and, um, but I think that under all of the circumstances, that's an appropriate sentence. Matthew Borges on indictment number 2017 <coughs> The jury having returned a verdict of guilty on the charge of murder in the first degree on the theories of deliberate premeditation and extreme atrocity and cruelty, you will hearken to the sentence the court has awarded against you. The court, having duly considered your offense, it is ordered by the court that you be punished by confinement for a term of life with parole eligibility on the theory of extreme atrocity and cruelty at 30 years and parole eligibility on the theory of deliberate premeditation at 30 years to run concurrent. And that this sentence is to be executed upon you in and within the precincts of the Massachusetts Correctional Institution at Cedar Junction and that you stand committed in execution of this sentence. The minimus shall reflect 948 days credit toward the sentence imposed this day. Sir, I must advise you, you do have the right to appeal to the Appellate Division of Superior Court the sentence that is imposed this day. If you wish to do so, you must do so in writing and within 10 days. And from the trial of this case, you hereby to receive automatic review of your conviction before the Supreme Judicial Court of the Commonwealth. The victim witness fee is hereby waived by the court. It will not be imposed. You otherwise stand committed custody, Mr. Officer. Uh, one final issue, yes. if I may. That's pre-sentence report, please be impounded. 
Yes, I will impound the pre sentence for my work. All right.